never eat sugar again after watching this. Okay, most people do not realize how much sugar they're actually eating. Because unfortunately, there is sneaky sugar in the majority of foods. But the truth is, doing all you can to avoid sugar is absolutely essential for your overall well-being. So here's why. First of all, sugar is absolutely a disaster for your immune system. Fascinating study that I've alluded to before took participants, human beings, and they gave them various forms of sugar. They gave them table sugar. They gave them sugar in the form of what would not seem to be sugar, but highly refined flour products like white bread, like bagels. But most remarkably, they gave them a glass of orange juice. Now, you wouldn't think that a glass of orange juice is high in sugar, but in fact, a glass of orange juice has as much sugar as a candy bar or a can of soda. So what happened when these individuals ate these various forms of sugar? Well, they took blood from them every hour for six hours. And lo and behold, the white blood cells ability to eat bacteria, to eat viruses, was 70% impaired even up to six hours after a glass of orange juice, that healthy way to start your morning. So sugar in and of itself absolutely wax your immune system's ability to protect you from bacteria and viruses. And believe me, most of us know that we would like our immune system to protect us from bacteria and viruses. The second thing is, we know that there are various good bacteria in our gut and bad bacteria in our gut. And sadly, bad bacteria absolutely thrive on simple sugars. Whereas good bacteria cannot use simple sugars to grow like bad bacteria. In fact, you can watch what happens when you eat sugar and bad bacteria get a hold of it right here on the YouTube channel. I've got a great video that demonstrates exactly what happens. So you need to imagine what happens every time you eat sugar one of the things that happens is your bad bacteria proliferate. Your bad bacteria, in turn, believe it or not, send text messages to your brain thanking you for getting that sugar and telling you to go get some more because that's exactly what you want. In fact, sugar is so addictive that this has been proven in rats and mice Rats and mice will press a lever to get sugar as opposed to cocaine and heroin. It is that addictive. And it's addictive because your bad bacteria actually take over your brain, hijack your brain to get more of the stuff that they're craving. And it really is, you know, it's a doo 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 doo. Oh, wait a minute, bad bacteria are telling me what to eat. Well, yes, they are. And in fact, that's why sugar is so difficult to give up because your bad bacteria can't imagine being without it. So one of the fun things to do is try giving up sugar just in the plain old everyday form for two weeks, for a month, and watch what happens. Watch what happens to your cravings Watch what happens to your attitude. Watch what happens to anxiety and depression. We're now re realizing that these bad bacteria are one of the major drivers for anxiety and depression in our lives. Also, sugar is really bad for your skin. And all of us want glowing, healthy skin. None of us want wrinkles. Your gut and your skin are connected. And in fact, your, the lining of, of your gut is your skin turned inside out. And the surface area of your gut is the same as the surface area as a tennis court. So imagine 
all that skin surface inside of you that you don't see. So what happens at the level of your gut is number one, reflected on your skin. Number two, we know that sugar produces what are called advanced glycation end products, better known as ages. Ages actually make your skin thick, ages make your skin discolored, ages are the cause of dark spots, age spots, liver spots, so, and that's directly related to the amount of sugar. I have so many patients that sugar was the cause of their acne because they didn't realize it was the sugar that was changing the bacteria in their gut that was actually damaging the wall of their gut and that was being displayed on their skin. All right, so ditch the sugar for better skin. Now, the other problem with sugar is that sugar is everywhere in actually far more available sources than what you see as sugar on the label. In fact, you should know that sugar is one of the leading causes of obesity in the United States. And in case you haven't been paying attention, we now know that the sugar industry for years and years paid nutritionists, particularly at Harvard Medical School, to tell the American public that sugar had nothing to do with the obesity rate, that sugar had nothing to do with heart disease, and that in fact fat in our diet was the culprit. And it was only through Freedom of Information Act that these secret bribes to nutritionists at multiple medical schools to tell people to fabricate data that sugar was not the culprit that it was known to be. So every time you know you hear, oh, sugar isn't all that bad, uh, don't believe it, number one. Americans eat on average about 150 pounds of sugar a year. And you're going, oh, wait a minute, I, that's, are you kidding? That's three pounds of sugar you know, a week. I, I don't do that. That's a half a pound of sugar a day. The problem is sugar is profoundly well hidden in all of our diets. And it's called different things. So first of all, if you're going to look at a package label, most people go down and look at sugar or look at added sugar. That's not where to look. The labeling laws have been changed to hide the sugar content because the labeling laws come through the FDA, but they're backed by the Department of Agriculture. And I got news for you. The Department of Agriculture's job is to sell agricultural products. And some of the biggest agricultural products, of course, are grains, wheat and corn primarily. You can take something like whole grain or whole wheat or whole corn, and it actually has a fairly low what's called glycemic index. Glycemic index is basically when you eat something, how fast does sugar rise in your bloodstream? But if you take these whole grains and pulverize them to individual tiny starch molecules, these starch molecules are instantly turned into sugar, faster than actually you can digest table sugar. Now, table sugar is actually two sugars bounded together, uh, glucose and fructose, fruit sugar. And that combination is called sucrose. So it's actually two molecules of sugar. And you actually have to break those two molecules before it enters your bloodstream. Starch, on the, under, on the other hand, is pure glucose. So as strange as it may seem, you have 
a higher glycemic index, eating a piece of whole wheat bread or eating a bagel than eating sugar. And so every time you say, oh, there's no sugar in here, think again. So how do you find the hidden sugar? Look at total carbohydrates. Look at the amount of grams per serving. Also look at the serving size. Companies are smart. They reduce the serving size to hide the amount of sugar that they know you're going to eat. It's kind of like, bet you can't eat one. So take total carbohydrates per serving. Then right below that, there'll be fiber. Fiber is indigestible. So you take the grams of fiber from the total carbohydrates. That will give you the grams of sugar per serving. Now, what does a gram of sugar mean? Well, that's pretty easy. There's four grams per every teaspoon of sugar. So four grams of carbohydrates equal one teaspoon of sugar. And you start doing the math and you will be shocked, even in healthy products, how much sugar is present in that meal you're having. And uh, I've mentioned this before. Recently, I had a patient who is a diabetic who told me, swore on a stack of Bibles that he doesn't eat sugar, he doesn't add sugar, he doesn't have any candy bars, and yet he's a bad diabetic. And I said, well, wait a minute, you know, what do you have for breakfast? Well, I have no sugar added cereal. And he said, I have skim milk. Well, I said, let's get out that package of cereal, and we pulled it up on the internet. And when we did the math, in each half cup of cereal, and I guarantee you he was not having a half a cup, there were actually 11 teaspoons of sugar. And then when he put a cup of low-fat milk on his cereal, he added another four teaspoons of sugar. So this guy was actually having the equivalent of two sodas for breakfast. And that instantly hit his bloodstream as pure sugar. And he thought he was doing everything right because even on the label, his cereal was labeled heart healthy. Lastly, on that comment, as a former past president of the Southern California chapter of the American Heart Association, I can assure you that that heart-healthy label is bought, it's sold, it's not awarded. We sell that label to the highest bidder. So buyer beware. If you see the words no sugar added, that means there's so much sugar in this product already, we didn't have to add any more. It's just all code words to look for where sugar's hiding. Lastly, I don't care if it's natural sugar, I don't care if it's maple syrup, I don't care if it's honey, I don't care if it's organic cane sugar, I don't care if it's coconut sugar, sugar is sugar is sugar. And it all ends up in the same place, destroying your health, destroying your immune system. Make sure to check out the next one here. Really good clinical trials that show eating an avocado a day compared to not eating an avocado a day makes you lose weight.